I'm Dante. I'm Andrea. Here we go now. I'm Joel. We have interactive lessons and trivia time. We have awesome games and lots of fun. We've got exciting music and worship where we get to jump around and dance. This is Bridgewood Kids! Hey everyone! Look What's guys? up kids? Our next gen team is so excited. We're hyped because this Bridgewood Kids experience is packed with so much stuff. It's loaded. Right. We've got worship and music and games, interactive lessons, and I could go on and on. Good. But before we do anything else, we want to hear from you students. We want to hear your loudest cheer your greatest noise that you can erupt with. Are you ready? ready? We're gonna count you down from three to one, and when we get to one, it's time to let it loose. Sound off. Team, are you ready to count ready. down? Ready. Let's yeah. do it, here we go. Three, two, one. Wow, do you guys hear them? Wow. So good. That was wow. super mm -hmm. loud. I'm pretty sure they just interrupted the auditorium. What do you guys think? Totally. That yes. was awesome. Well, as good as that was, I think we need one more thing to happen before we get into our experience. Mm. What do you guys think? Yeah. Totally. Think so. Let's make it happen. You guys cannot be sitting down, right? We can't do this sitting down. Absolutely we not. need everybody out there to get on That's your right. feet. Kids, leaders, everybody up. That means even you in the back. We see yes. you. Let's stand up. And what we're going to do is we are going to blast off. Woo. So I'm going to count down from three. When we get to one, we are all going to blast off into this experience together. It's going to be fun. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Ready. All Can't right. Wait. Here we go. Three, three two, two, one. Blast, blast off. off. What's up guys? Today's game is seated soccer. Game on! So for this game, all you're going to need is a ball. You're going to divide into two teams and sit across from each other. The facilitator will grab the ball and throw it in the middle. To score a point, all you have to do is kick the ball to the end of your team. The first team to get 10 points wins. Let's make it happen! It was between Dallas, Jen, and Andrea, but then Andrea got it, and we won. Yeah, but that's because they cheated. She hit it with her hand. You see it, kids. You tell us what you did.
Hey! Hey, Bridgewood kids. We're so excited that you could join us today. We love spending time with you guys each and every week. Now, if you've been with us before, you know this is the time where we talk about the Big God Story. The Big God Story is where we learn all about God and what He has for our lives and how we can apply that to our lives. Now, before I turn it over to Andrea and Jen, we're going to do a little bit of review about what we learned last week. If you remember, we learned all about Paul and Silas, and they went on a crazy missionary journey where some pretty crazy things happened to them. Unfortunately, some people didn't like their message, and Paul and Silas were even thrown in jail. But that didn't stop Paul. He knew that everyone needed to know that Jesus loved them. Today, we're going to hear about what happened when Paul headed to a famous ancient city, Athens, the capital of Greece. Enjoy the story, and I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Thanks, Dante, for introducing today's story. Speaking of introductions, for those of you who don't already know, this is Andrea. Andrea is the newest member of our Next Gen team. Andrea and her family attend our Goodrich campus. Will you guys do me a favor? If you see her around, will you introduce yourself and make sure that you make her feel super welcome? Woohoo! Thanks, Jen. I'm so happy to be here. We are so happy to have you. Okay, back to today's story. Like Dante said earlier, today's story takes place in Athens. Athens was a place that was full of people. Now these people would often stand in the marketplace and argue about beliefs, thoughts, and religion. Many of the people there were Greek, which if you remember from a few weeks ago, means they're Gentiles, not Jews. Athens was actually the center of Greek religion, a religion that worshipped many false gods and idols. That's right. Do you guys happen to know what an idol is? We've talked about it a lot in the Big God story. An idol isn't just an object, but anything we put on a pedestal that receives praise that should be given to the one and only true God. This city had idols and shrines to their false gods everywhere. Now we may not have actual gold statues that we worship, but if you could think about it, we probably have idols too. Can you guys think of some things in your life that may be idols? How about money, cell phone, TV, social media, or maybe even our friends? Those things aren't all bad, but it's when we put the value of those things above God that it becomes really dangerous. And that is exactly what these people were doing. These same people who were worshiping idols and false gods were the people that Paul came to share Jesus with. At first, they listened to what Paul said, but soon they stopped listening and they began to disagree with Paul. His teachings about Jesus were not the teachings that they were used to. They soon decided Paul needed to go see the authorities about his teaching. They took Paul to speak in a very important place. It is where a powerful group of Athens leaders met. Paul being brought before those leaders was a little like being brought before a city council or even in front of the highest court in your town. What a powerful audience. Being in front of people who have the power to throw you in jail or even sentence you to death is a pretty scary thing. But Paul was not afraid because God was with him. Did you know that just as God was with Paul, that God is also with you? His Holy Spirit lives inside of us and gives us the power and authority to walk boldly, even in the situations that may seem scary to others. The Holy Spirit also gave him the wisdom to know how to talk to these people. Let's turn to Acts chapter 17, starting at verse 22, to see what Paul said. People of Athens, I see that in every way you are religious. As I walk around and look carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. 
so you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. Now, those may have seemed like some pretty harsh words from Paul, but the people had an altar for a God that they didn't even know. Paul began to tell the people that he knew the God that they didn't know. The one true God, the living God, the God who made the whole world and everything in it. Paul started from the very beginning of the Big God story. He told them that God created everything and he still keeps everything going. Then Paul explained that God also made them. Even though God doesn't need anything, he loves people. This is why he created us. God wants every single person in the world to be in the right relationship with him. Because of this, God sent a man, his son named Jesus, so that the people could accept him, be forgiven of their sin, and have relationship with God. God wants us to love and worship him, not an idol made of metal. And Paul's words still speak to us today. It is amazing to know God created everything. He loves us. He wants to be known, and he can be known through Jesus. Look at this. Can this truly comfort us when we are sad? Has it known about us since we were born? Can this idol know us like God knows us? Of course not. This is what Paul was trying to tell the Athenians. False gods can't be known like God can, and false gods are not living like our God. Paul encouraged them to put their trust in the one true God. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Andrea. God made everything and everyone for one purpose, so people could choose to have a relationship with Him. God wants to be known. That's why God invites all of us to be a part of His family and the big God story He is still writing. That's why God sent His Son Jesus to earth to live and die as a man and to come back to life as our Savior. So what do you think? Do you want to worship false gods and idols made by human hands? Do you want to allow these things to become more important than having a relationship with the God of the universe? Or do you want to choose to give all your praise, all your attention, and all your focus to the God who always is and always has been? Let's pray together now. God, we thank you for today. And God, we thank you that you're with us and you never leave us. I pray that we would remember what we learned in our story today, that you're always with us and that we would have a true relationship with you and always put you first in everything we do. We thank you and praise you. In your name, amen. And now over to... Trivia Time! What's up guys? We like to call this segment Trivia Time. We're gonna give you guys some awesome questions to help you guys better understand the lesson that we just learned. If you pause the video, those questions are actually located in the video's description. Find a family member or maybe a friend and discuss those questions together now. Have fun!
just wanna be where you are Where you are I just wanna be where you What's up kids? I'm Joel and I'm back for this week's rendition of The Big Rewind. In today's story, we continued along the story of Paul, this time in the city of Athens. In the city of Athens, they worshiped many false idols. And some of them, they didn't even know what they were idols for. You can't worship an idol because it doesn't know you or have any relationship to you. Well, that leads us to today's big idea. God is the living God. God the Father and Jesus the Son are living in heaven awaiting those who believe in them. The Holy Spirit gives us strength and power to live a life that is bold and fearless for Him. Let me ask you a question. Do you guys have any idols in your life you may be worshiping other than Jesus? Well, let me challenge you today. Think about those things and maybe you reassess. Think about how important it is that we worship Jesus because he loves you, he cares about you. The other things we may be worshiping don't have the same feelings for you. All right, you get the idea. God is the living God. Now on to our big Bible blast. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. John 14, 6 through 7. All right, kids, here's a great verse you can use in your life. It really helps us understand that because we know Jesus, we know God. Okay? So take that verse home, memorize it. Again, it's going to be great for your life. So that's all we have for two <clears throat> So that's all we have for this week on the Big Rewind. We'll see you guys next time. Hey kids, we've got one more thing! All right, we need your help with this. This is our Bridgewood Kids mission statement. It goes like this. We want to be kids so close to Christ that Everyone in the world will know him. All right, that's a wrap. See, ya. See you next time.